Huber in the morning on 100.7 The Bay. On this day. Man, he sounds good today. I ain't even good today. Listen to that one more time. On this day. Woo-wee. He's just great. Favorite time. son. Time for the radio sensation. Sweep in the nation. Here we go. On this day. It's Huber in the mornings on this day on 100.7 The Bay. Why, it sure is. <laughs> we need one an hour. <laughs> uh, it is time to take a deep dive. March 6th, throughout the annals of history, time to listen to clips, reminisce, put our fog lights on down memory lane, all in a little segment we like to call. On this day. You can play along, 410-584-1007. Help us guess the year in which the following things occurred. On this day. See what we did there? Yeah. We go. Look at that. I don't like it. <laughs> you know what I like? There's one silver lining to being homesick, and that's I get to watch more music docs. Including the one on Netflix right now. Uh, I think it's just called Pop. But there's a bunch of episodes. Everything from auto-tune to K-pop to boy bands. And one of the episodes that I watched recently was about Britpop, which I was all in on. I mean, this era uh, was like from 94-ish, which is when definitely maybe came out by Oasis, all the way through till like... 99, early 2000s. Pretty much song two by Blur kind of marked the end of Britpop, which I know it sounds kind of ironic because it's one of the biggest songs that came out of the movement, but by that time it had become much like grunge did here in the States where it just became like once the fashion magazines were starting to say, here's the Britpop look for 1998, people were like, eh, I don't know that I'm into that anymore. Yeah. Now that it's a thing. Uh, very good, but it did just, uh, again, kind of show the genesis of Oasis and how they just kind of rose out of this Britpop movement as the kind of, you know, stones to the Blur's Beatles. Like, the Blur was really artsy and into, you know, the art and being British and all this. And these guys just wanted to get hammered. They wanted to try to get chicks. And they wanted to say how big they were, do a lot of drugs, and just not care. (laughs) And uh, it was all pre-internet because I can remember... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> at Towson University at the time where I went, Towson State. Get it right. Um, there was an internet lab, which was a classroom full of computers that were hooked to the internet, and you had to sign up for a time. So you could use it from 10 to 10.30 a.m. or whatever. And you had to sign up in advance, and you'd go to use the internet lab. And all I did in the mid-'90s in the internet lab at old Towson State was... Oasis Net, uh, Blur, Supergrass, all these super furry animals, all these crazy British bands. I would just look them up and I would look up the NME and Q and all these because a lot of this stuff was fed by these British music tabloids that just needed content because the whole of the UK is like the size of, I don't know, a Midwestern state. You know what I mean? So it's like something one band from one city hates a band from another city and all this kind of stuff and they were just starved for entertainment because it was at the very birth of the internet so they really needed the entertainment and oasis was happy to step up and provide it and that kind of takes us to where we're talking about here is it is you're gonna read the story and the last three minutes has not been anything you've talked about liam gallagher of oasis on this day sorry miles on a year to be discussed Headbutts a 19-year-old British fan named Benjamin Jones and breaks his nose. And let's be honest, his nose probably was already ugly. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of soccer balls through the nose over there in the UK. Boys! <laughs> the incident takes place in Brisbane, outside of the Singer's Hotel. Gallagher is charged with assault, but Jones later drops the case and pursues civil charges. And this tracks, I gotta be honest. Not shocked. Yeah. But I want to destroy Liam, right? Yeah. But I don't know what that level of fame and 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 then your fan interactions are like. And that's one of the things that, you know, there's a bunch of documentaries out there about Oasis and not even just so much the band, but how their rise from nobodies to selling hundreds of thousands of tickets in, in like 
you know, huge castles and stuff over there happened meteorically fast. So there was no like media training. There was no adaptation to this higher brow lifestyle. They went from being drunk idiots in a pub who couldn't pay their tab to drunk idiots in a pub who could buy it if they wanted to (laughs) within like six months of each other. Yeah. I mean, that's insane to think about. And uh, add cocaine and a crazy attitude to the mix and you headbutt a 19-year-old kid outside of your hotel and break his nose. (laughs) I'm going to have to say this is either 94, 95, or maybe 96, but probably 95 because... I don't know. They, I mean, they weren't popular that long. I mean, it was a quick meteoric shot up and then back down. You're getting cocky. Uh, 410 is chiming in. Sarah from Mount Airy's giving me a 96. But Patty from Relay and Jessica from Westminster are saying 1998. And maybe that's because he was headbutting him because he was mad that they weren't popular anymore. <laughs> yeah, I got civil suit money at yeah, that point. Right, right. <laughs> Dude is like, I don't want the cops involved. I just need the person with the bank account involved. Right. right. Uh, I, I have no frame of reference to this other than uh, just knowing when they were popular and famous. And I got two votes for the same year on the text board. I got to take it. Right, Miles? Yeah, my lord. 1998. It is 1998. Thank you so much, Tracy, Patty, that and is correct. Jessica. I missed. That sorry. is correct. Mm. That is correct. Man, you, did, you did so good yesterday, and I just came in and ruined it. That's the fact, Jack. Ending. And applause. On. <laughs> We're going to come back with part two of the Radio Sensation. Sweet. For the nation. One of the biggest cult movies of the last uh, couple of decades. The Big Lebowski. We discuss it coming up next. We're going to move on about uh, talking about a fantastic movie. If you watch it at the right time in your life. That's all I can say about that. Yep. Does that make a lot of sense? Very I think true. it will. Especially once you hear that we're talking about The Big Lebowski. Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. You know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, Duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Ah! You got the wrong guy. I'm the dude. Your name's Lebowski, Lebowski. Ah! Jeff Lebowski, the other Lebowski, the millionaire. I received this ransom note this morning. This is the bummer, man. They want you to take the money and act his courier. Why, man? Say, dude. Where is your car? I, the movie's weird. Um, it's slow. It's got a real trippy part in the middle where it gets like turns into a cartoon. Yeah. It makes me want to drink a white Russian every time I see it. But if you ask me, I'll tell you, I do love it. One of the best TV edits for a movie during the bowling scene when they're talking about his valued rug. Yes. And they're using another word. Yeah. And they just keep going <laughs> on TV, TBS, TNT. They peed on your valued rug. Your valued rug. <laughs> One of the best lines in the movie, and that's a bold statement because it's a very quotable film, is if you need a toe, I'll get you a toe right now. <laughs> John Goodman's character in that is unbelievable. There's so many amazing characters. I mean, Buscemi's character in that is unbelievable. And we can't forget... Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, John Turturro is absolutely amazing in that. And that's all not to say that the title character isn't amazing, too. But the supporting cast is so good that you almost forget how good Lebowski is himself. Even the um, I don't know the name of the actor that plays the, the real millionaire Lebowski. He's great. Philip Seymour Hoffman's in that. He's great. Julianne I mean, Moore. Yeah, she, Tara Reed. Yeah, it's insane. It's just I don't know. I really, I really do like it. I love the discussions about the Eagles. Oh my God. <laughs> I cannot hear an Eagles song or be in a car with people that have seen that movie and that line does not come up. I just hate the Eagles, man. I hate the Eagles, man. Uh, I, and I'm telling you, just the sipping of the white Russian throughout the entire movie with the milk and Kahlua just dripping off his mustache and doing the, the suck it <laughs> off the mustache, which is a move I know sadly all too well. Um, the dude abides, man. And, you know, it's quotable. It's memeable. It's all over the place. I don't know. And I, you know what it's about? It's a mix up about the rug. Oh, what about the nihilist? Isn't Flea one of the, yeah. uh, the nihilists? <laughs> I mean, any movie with Flea in it, 
Yeah, what was the one where they drive the monster truck and chase Charlie Sheen around? Uh, the chase. I think the chase, called, yeah. yeah. Um, and it did. It came in the late 90s for me, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So you're talking, you know, the, the latter days of Towson State University and coming home late, you know, potentially inebriated or something else and sitting there and watching that movie. Like, it just fit perfectly into our world of quotable movies and stuff at the time. But it was artistic and cool enough to like not just be like old school which is kind of just slapstick goofy you yeah. know what i mean um what's the name of the dude with the big voice too that's at the very beginning oh sam elliott yeah sam elliott i mean the cast is unbelievable um i do love the movie you just gave me a big flashback it's been too long since i've seen it i should run it back again what if i go home and watch it this weekend for some reason and then come back in on monday and go oh i was wrong i hate it no, it hasn't aged well. Uh, no, it, it's still great. Your kids won't appreciate it no. at all. No, and I don't. That character though, that's a pretty universal character. The I don't care how I look. My car is just transportation. I don't care what it looks like. There's something kind of both weird, but also inspirational about that type of uh, self love, self awareness. Where it's like I'm just going to wear a robe and carry around a drink. <laughs> And drive a wrecked car, and as long as I got my beautiful rug and my hatred of the Eagles, I'm cool. Yeah, it's literally you <laughs> if you didn't want kids. I do think I could have potentially morphed into the dude in some way, shape, or form. I mean, let's break it down. <laughs> you don't drive a fancy car, so it's to get you from A to That's B. Right. Your wardrobe's pretty much the same every week. Yeah, so I there's pretty not much a- wear clothes to not be naked. Right. right. <laughs> you would drink if you didn't have responsibilities. Probably, yeah. The the my, my lack of drinking lately is direct correlation with my having to get up early. Yeah. <laughs> and then we just got to factor in bowling and you go bowling with the kids. I do enjoy the bowling. It's a sport that's at my level of physical ability. Yeah. <laughs> It all tracks. All right, so I got to get a year. Yep. Uh, Miles, what do you say? I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know if I trust Miles today. I'm going to have to go to the text board. 410-584-100.7. Um, they're saying you did a double. A lot of people are saying you doubled up on us today. Did I? Much like Sir Mix-a-Lot. Uh, double, double up. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. I'm going to go with it. You're my lord. 1998. It was a double up. Double uh, uh. up. That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. But is it a fact? That's the fact, Jack. Oh, it is. That's good. Very nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to need you to do me a favor real quick. And let's go ahead and put your hands together. Put your hands together. And welcome to the stage. Round of applause for Jackson Heights. Oh, Mr. Randy Watson. Oh, yes. I just put an H at the end of it.